Her fra Falstersiden, der kan man se hen over Guldborgsund og hele vejen over til Lolland. Men det vi ikke kan se herfra, det er, at der netop nu er ved at blive gravet en 1,5 km lang gasrørsledning ned under vandet. Og den skal forsyne sukkerfabrikkerne med gas. Og i dag, der skal I med ind på byggepladsen. Sukkerfabrikkerne i Nykøbing, Falster og Nakskov er landets anden største udleder af CO2. Men fra næste år skal fabrikkerne udskifte kul og olie med gas. Den her gasledning den er rigtig god for, at vi kan komme videre med den grønne omstilling. Regeringen har afsat 1,3 milliarder kroner til at etablere et 115 km langt gasrør fra Everdrup på Sydsjælland til Nykøbing, Falster og Nakskov. Bart kul og olie er jo det aller værste for vores klima. Øh, nu skal det så være grønt. Øh, I første omgang vil der være noget naturgas. Øh, det er bedre end kul og olie, men på sigt skal det være biogas, og det er jo, det er jo klimaneutralt, så det er den helt grønne løsning. Gasrøret skal ikke bare gøre sukkerproduktionen grønnere. Det skal også sikre de omkring 500 arbejdspladser på sukkerfabrikkerne. Her i programmet følger vi gasrørets vej fra Lolland til Falster under Guldborgsund. Velkommen til Danmarks sidste gasrør. Vi er standing on the Falster side of the of this uh, and what's going on right now yeah so good questions uh we are on the north side of our crossing we have two sides to every crossing crossing is where we cross the water the fairbanks crossing uh on this side we have the pulling side on the other side we have the pipe which we actually pull so what you see here the machine there is taking section by section is taking the um the pulling string so at the moment we have an empty hole and the pipe's not being pulled through yet So we put the drill string through the entire hole to the end and we connect them and we pull it and pull it and pull it section by section. That's what you see with that big machine there. And why are they washing the drill? Yeah, because the hole is um, full of drilling fluid, bentonite. That's what you see in the white. It's actually chalk mixed with our drilling fluid, bentonite. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's in the hole so the pipe actually floats when it comes through. So you imagine like a 1.5 kilometer piece of steel is quite heavy. We use the buoyancy, the flotation of the actual steel to make it easy to pull. And that fluid keeps it like in a, like it floats in that fluid through the entire pulling sequence. That's what you see coming out. And uh, this is the drill and it's actually similar to uh, the pipeline. So are this going under the water or is it in the water? Yes, it's going, it's actually every hole we have, we have three crossings and they go between 40 and 80 meters underneath the seabed. So not in the water, no, we go quite, quite deep actually, yeah. And you have to drill under Kulborsund, it's a one and a half kilometers. 1.48 kilometers. Okay, that's pretty yeah. far. Yeah. So how is, the, how is this even possible? Is the drill that long? Uh, good question. So we, when we, you're seeing here the final phase of several phases and the first phase is drilling. In that first phase, we have two drills. We have one of these on both sides, and each drill comes in and meets in the middle. So each individual drill will drill of, of the order of up to a kilometer on the other crossings, in this case up to 800 meters, and the drills meet in the middle, then one comes back and one comes up, and that's the drilling sequence. And what you're seeing here is the bigger of the two drills, the larger one, because it has to do the most work pulling the actual pipe. But when you drill underwater, aren't you a little afraid of What is uh, hiding beneath the water? Yes, we are. Um, yeah, we are. And as a consequence, we take a lot of investigations before we actually drill. So uh, we've been working this project since 2020, from concept to installation this year. At the end of 2021, we had quite a long, it's called a ground investigations campaign, where you build a ground model. So you drill experimental geotechnical boreholes, you take geophysical surveying and put it all together into a soil model, a ground model, so you understand the geological layering and the, the, the risks associated with the subsurface. But under the surface of the water, what, what can you find? Maybe there's some big rocks or are there anything that you're afraid of, of meeting there? The biggest problem we have is big rocks and Denmark is full of big rocks. But luckily on our three crossings we didn't see any of those big rocks. So we feel like we had quite a good investigation up front. Um, the only thing we cannot see actually is big rocks. So it's all about geostatistical chance. Will you see one, will you not? And we just don't know. So um, the machine tooling is big enough where it can displace those rocks, but that is our biggest problem, yes. Everything else is very typical. The top half is Danish till, coarse gravels like you see here, actually most of the time, and Danish chalk. And actually Danish chalk is the best thing we can drill for, which is what we have here on Gobosund. And everything is going on point? Everything is going just fine. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about all of this uh, 
you actually built like a, a, a fortress here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a, uh, a noise mitigation scheme we have, so we're required to obey everything in terms of environmental um, law in Denmark, including noise, uh, noise pollution, so this prevents that to the community. So actually this uh, particular design protects uh, the neighbours in Hassel of Plantasia and also the neighbour over the way there in that, uh, in that part of the, uh, of the workplace. So it's all about the noise sources and how far from there the people and horses and animals live reducing the impact on those neighbours. So this is a requirement actually on every every one of our work sites. So we have this similar technique on actually every work site that we've had. And so they're high enough and in such a place where we minimise disturbance to our neighbours. So what are, this machine is going down now. And yeah. what, what, what is happening now? What's happening now is we've um, so the, the crossing is one and a half kilometers long, but we have, of course, several sections of steel which we disconnect every time we pull a little bit through. So what you see here is we've pulled successfully 16 meters. We disconnected that pipe and removed that to the side, and we're going back for the second 16 meters, and we'll pull that one next. When that's gone to the top, there's a further 16 meters, remove that and do it again, down to connect, up to pull, and so on, till we're finished the pulling. Tre steder på sin vej fra Sydsjælland til Falster og Lolland skal gasrøret føres ned under havet. Ved Grønsund, Færgestrømmen og til sidst den 1,5 km lange strækning under Guldborgsund. To boremaskiner bliver opstillet på hver sin side af sundet, og så bliver der boret i en dybde på omkring 80 meter under havets overflade. Og når røret er blevet svejset sammen, bliver selve gasrøret trukket igennem. Noget af det, vi har været mest nervøse for, tør jeg godt sige, det er de her undervands boringer, vi skal lave. Det er jo altid usikkert, hvad er det, der gemmer sig, når vi først begynder at bore. Er der en forhindring, man ikke på forhånd har kendt? Så der er mange sådan nogle, nogle ukendte udfordringer, der, der venter, når man giver sig i kast med sådan, et, med sådan et projekt. What is happening right here? You can see, like, the, the pipeline is going down. Yeah. Like, underneath the ground, and then under Guldborsund. Ja. Yeah. Yeah, so correct. are they pulling it, or how is it working? That's what's happening, yes. Yeah. So, the, so the entire hole from the fastest side to the lowland side is, is one and a half kilometers long. The first part is going down and bending, then it flattens out underneath Gubosund. What you're seeing here is we have the drill string all the way from there up to here with a big hook. It grabs the pipe and it pulls it back one section at a time. And the big red machine we saw over there, the drilling machine, which is the pulling machine, it's doing it section by section, which is why you see it stop and start. They replace the section, they pull some more. That's what you're seeing here. So are you worried now that something will go wrong or or if it will suddenly stop or something? Are you a little bit worried about that? Or? We are always worried about that, yes. Okay. Um, we've had no problems so far on the first two crossings. Um, this is our third and final crossing in the easiest geology. It's only chalk here. Um, the two issues we normally have in chalk in Denmark are flint in big layers of hard flint layers, uh, which can damage the coating of the pipe. We didn't have so much of the flint, that was good. And the only thing we can have now is boulder or rocks. And if we have a boulder, yes, that can be a problem. So far, so good. But everything is looking uh, like it goes as a shot. So how do you think about that you are a project manager in maybe the, the last gas line in Denmark? Yeah, it makes me quite proud actually because the gas is for a reason here. You know, we have replaced, uh, we will replace coal. We will facilitate biogas going to the grid in Shellan, which is two, two good reasons for having a, a pipeline at all. So I think it's actually the first of several um, pipelines like this. It's not just a regular gas pipeline, it's a bit of a special one. So I feel quite proud about this particular project actually. Yeah. And uh, what about uh, this area? Because now, now it looks like a huge construction site. <laughs> uh, Will it just be nature again after you're done? Absolutely, yeah. We spend, uh, we will spend approximately four to six weeks of uh, rest restoring the area, so put it back to as it was when we first took it over. So yeah, that's the, that's the plan. And we've just finished restoring actually North Falster, so Faro. We um, we're in the process with uh, Sushiland, so we've already done three of our six work sites. This is our fourth and fifth on each side, and we hope to have no issues at all. So the pits will be filled in and gone, and the gravel will be taken away, and hopefully as green as you see it there over here in a few months. And then you can't see anything that you actually built? No, not a thing. Mm -hmm.